welcome to Jade Coloring. For the month of April, I decided to work in this um, new book by uh, Christine Caron. This is Fairy and Fantasy 4, and I got the grayscale version. But I'm super excited to um, start a page in this book, so I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to um, do this for the color along for um, April, and it's been really rainy where I live lately, so I actually have never colored a scene before with um, raindrops and stuff, so it should be interesting. Hopefully, I'll be able to um, do something with it. It's definitely going to be a challenge for me to uh, figure it out, but um, I am going to base some parts of this page with alcohol markers. Any alcohol markers will work. The ones I have on hand that are um, mainly my skin tone ones are the um, the Copic Sketch um, alcohol markers. And um, this is Cotton Pearl. <clears throat> and then I just have uh, the Milky White. And then I just grabbed a bunch of different colors um, with the Prismacolors that I think I will probably use for the uh, skin and I guess we'll just get started from there. I'm going to go in first with a uh, cotton pearl and just kind of layer it um, all over her uh, skin. I got you zoomed in a little bit closer. I'm going to go in with um, cotton pearl. It's a Copic um, sketch marker and I'm just going to um, put this over her entire face I was so excited to um, get this book in the mail the other day And I feel like uh, when I was flipping through the pages, this was pretty much the first one that I definitely felt like I needed to color. I don't know, I just love her face. It's so expressive. I do tend to uh, take a long, a long time when it comes to doing portraits, but I'm going to um, try my best to kind of be conscious of um, how many colors I'm using for the skin and to maybe not use quite as many. Okay, so we got our base layer down. Um, I decided that I'm not going to go in with any more of the Copics. I just kind of want something to start off with. And sorry, just putting those back. So we have um, Prisma colors is what I'll be using. And I was thinking I want to go in with like um, my pinks and my. Um, 
kind of salmon pink and then maybe some red and pale vermilion so just a lot of reddish pink and orange orangey tones to go kind of under um, like a, under the base of the skin and I think I will start with um, maybe the pink and try and get some of that down in the areas that I kind of want it. I'll put a little bit over the top of the ear, maybe in the bottom of the ear. Just kind of picking out the areas I, I want that to go. I don't really have one way that I color um, the portraits and like the faces and stuff. I just kind of get a bunch of colors and mess around with them until I kind of like how it, it looks. And just lightly putting that up here on the higher part of her cheek and working my way kind of across her cheek there, right under the eye. And do the same over here. I feel like I accidentally got a pretty noticeable part of the marker right there. But we'll blend it all out and I'm sure it really won't be too noticeable once I'm done, hopefully. Maybe put a little bit on the chin area. And some up on the top part of the forehead. I do tend to um, kind of use the side of my um, pen pencil lead when I'm doing um, the face. I don't know why. I just don't... Uh, I like to layer a lot, so don't want a whole lot of um, color getting on there, especially when I'm first starting out, because I want to be able to build it up as best I can. Okay, so I'm just taking the pale vermilion and adding that, continuing to add that to the face. Just kind of going around um, certain areas.
Okay. And then maybe we'll go in with um, salmon pink to kind of blend those, the pink and the pale vermilion together. Already trying to forget about the ears. But yeah, I think that is good. And then I'm going to go in with a carmine red and just add this along kind of the edges. along certain areas here. And I'm trying not to uh, bear down too hard. I just want kind of a hint of that color to show through. And I might go over a couple of times in some of the areas where I think it's looking like it kind of works well with the other colors. Especially along this shadow that, you know, with the grayscale. Whoops. I don't know why I talk with my hands while I'm coloring. <laughs> Especially with the grayscale, you really have an idea of, you know, where those, um, some of those shadows go. Or you want more of an outline. That's one reason why I really love getting the grayscale versions of the Christine Karen books is because they're very helpful with learning um, how to uh, color the portraits and stuff. Like we're getting there. Um, 
I know it's kind of hard to see those orange and pink colors, but um, really we don't have to be too careful laying those down. We just want kind of that wash of color to come un underneath like the darker colors. This is clay rose and I'm taking this in like the shadowier parts and kind of in circular motions kind of trying to work that in to deepen those uh, shadows and kind of to cover up a little bit of that grayscale that's on the page. So that's one reason why the grayscale is helpful because you can see where, you know, your shadows go and then, you know, kind of work your way to your highlight but still leaving some space to work with. If that makes sense, I guess. I don't know. I I feel like I'm very chaotic when it comes to doing um, the skin on the portraits and stuff. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't really have a process too much. I just kind of pick some colors and start adding them in there and hope for the best. I hope I'm not repeating myself. I might have already said that. But I hope, the point is, I hope you can follow a little bit what I'm doing. There's some pretty big shadowy areas and like the crease of the eyes. So I'll run this clay rose along there. Yeah, just working my way around her face. I'll be honest, I have no idea what to do with the raindrops. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. I feel like she kind of looks weird without, with her lips being um, still kind of gray. So I'm going to go in with like pink and just kind of 
do a light layer of that. Okay, I have peach and nectar, and I'm gonna go over the clay rose and add the nectar into the mix here, and um, just ultimately just trying to darken up those shadows and kind of blend those two colors together. under her lips here. It's quite heavily um, shadowed, so kind of working that in there a little bit more. Okay, so that was nectar, and now we'll go in with peach. And just starting along the edge of the hairline and working our way over and around the face. I'm just trying to uh, blend those colors together.
This is such a, good, a cute picture. Okay. I want to um, go in with Sienna Brown and very lightly I'm going to um, to use this. Just in some of these um, areas where it's extremely grayscale heavily like lined. Um, I just want to start kind of defining those areas a little bit more. I'm not using a whole lot of pressure with the sienna brown. Just barely um, adding that to all these colors. I'm always excited to uh, figure out what color I want to do the hair. Sometimes depending on what color you use really kind of defines the, the page. I do tend to go for, you know, the usual like brown, blonde, and like black hair. I've been do doing a lot of like darker colors lately too. But then it's always fun to do like a pink or purple. liking this so far. It's a lot of fun. I just kind of get into a trance sometimes when I do the the faces. I don't know. It's just really fun to kind of transform those into um, looking a little bit more colorful. This is Carmine Red and I'm going to lightly add this into um, kind of the center of her lips.
just very lightly. We can add a little bit more of this to um, the cheeks, maybe a little bit on the nose. And I'm just kind of using the side of the pencil lead. Do a little bit up here. Okay. Um, let's do a little bit of um, kind of blending these colors together. And this is just a light, light peach. I uh, doesn't really say it anymore on the pencil barrel, but. I'm pretty sure from what I can tell that's light peach. I'm just kind of taking this over and just doing a light layer. Trying to get that um, to blend a little bit. I'm not using a whole lot of pressure again. I usually don't use too much pressure when doing the faces because I, um, for one, I'm scared I'll mess it up and I don't want to commit too much to one color. I want to kind of just work with it and keep adding this and that until I think it kind of looks like it's coming together a little bit. Okay. I'm wanting to keep it with just these few colors I picked out so we're not using like a hundred different pencils because I could use a hundred different pencils I think but um, I'm trying to limit myself. This is salmon pink and I'm just kind of adding a little bit of this to the face. got the uh, rosy or no this isn't rosy beige uh, clay rose and I um, just adding this to the shadows
keep on darkening up those shadows with the sienna brown. I did forget to kind of shade or do some shading on the ears a little bit. Okay, I want to go in with the pink and I kind of want to um, focus on like the center of the cheek. Just anywhere else you kind of want to put a bit of pink, add it to the, um, the colors. Go in with peach and just lightly um, blending all that together. It's just about you know going in and um, adding as many colors as you want until you feel like you know you like how um, it's all laying out. And then going in and kind of blending it all together. And I, I tend to start out with really light pressure and then I um, start adding a little bit more pressure as I go. Once I kind of start liking um, the color buildup I have and then just kind of working my way around the, the face and I just kind of do that until you know I think it looks good enough or I'm tired of doing it <laughs>
Okay, we're um, trying to finish up her face. I have um, Carmine Red. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that to kind of the high points of the face. I'm sorry if I'm super slow at um, doing the skin tone. It's just something I tend to take a little bit longer to do. Believe it or not though, I'm quite a bit faster than I used to be somehow. I want to go in with a little bit of a lighter color with our salmon pink and just um, continuing to uh, blend out all these colors and um, kind of layer them all together until I kind of like the, the outcome. I feel like she looks kind of starting to look a little bit brighter. And I'll try to list in the description um, the pencils I use for uh, this so that way you can kind of start out with the pencils if you, you want to follow along at all. Like we need a little more color kind of down here on the other side of um, the chin, the jawline I guess that would be called. <laughs> For some reason I was like what would I call that? I'm just going to kind of blend um, those colors together using the salmon pink, get a little bit more on the top of the chin here. That way it doesn't look too dark. And go along.
see. I want to go in with a little bit more of our the clay rose and um, keeping to kind of the edges still along the hairline. And she's got little dimples, so I'm trying to work the clay rose into those dimples so we kind of don't lose those because those are super cute. A little bit on the side of the nose and along the um, eyelids, working our way down around the cheek. Because she is, has a real big smile, so I want those to kind of look kind of prominent since, you know, that seems to be the way um, Christine Karen kind of has drawn it out. And kind of working along the um, crease under the eyes. Work on the shadow areas along the ears. Yeah, I'm just kind of hopping along around and um, just touching up certain areas before we start to kind of add a little bit more pressure and blend those colors together, making them look a little bit smoother. And kind of Switching around my directions, I'm um, using the pencils. Okay, so I wanna go in with, um, this is Nectar, and pretty much doing a little bit of the same thing that I did with the clay rose. I kind of tend to go back and forth between, you know, one side of the face to the other to make sure that I don't have too much on one side and not enough on the other. That way it kind of looks symmetrical and even. That's not to say you can't add more shadows to one side if that's what you um, want. I guess you just kind of got to imagine in what direction the light's coming from. And this is kind of like, I feel like, straight on her face is what I kind of am imagining, so. 
I'm going to try to make it even. Darken it up here under the nose and along the sides of the cheek, under the mouth here. While I have this out, we're just going to do a little bit under the chin, onto the neck. Okay, I'm going to go in with the Pell Vermilion and um, just kind of go along the high points that I want the highlight to be. I just want to brighten up. Um, this is a pretty bright color, so I'm just wanting to brighten up that kind of undertone a little bit on the outsides of the darker colors where we go kind of transition into the highlight. I am going to go back in with the pink. Okay, um, I think we'll use pink around the cheeks, and I'll probably put a little bit more on the lips. I honestly haven't colored too many um, teeth, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it might look okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just taking the pink along the cheeks here. I want them to be pretty rosy, maybe kind of under the eye a little bit. bit more
Okay. Now, I do want to go in with, um, sharpen it a little, the uh, light peach. And I'm just going to lightly take this over the center of the face is mainly where I'm concentrating the light peach at. And um, kind of the top of the brow bone. Maybe the center of the eyelid. And down the bridge of the nose a little. In the middle of the cheek. Okay, um, I like to use, if I could find it, oh there it is, the um, peach and I want to use this to start kind of smoothing out my darker colors. It's kind of the, a medium tone for the skin color. And um, I like to use this to kind of make those blend out a little smoother. So I'm gonna start at the edge of the hairline and work my way out. And I am going back and um, kind of back and forth using a little more pressure, but not a whole lot to kind of um, get that to smooth out. so that um, it kind of looks like it's all blended together. And those darker areas. Make our way across the nose and eye area. And continuing to blend with a, a little bit more pressure because I've pretty much done all the shading that I want to do and I mean I don't want to be you know here forever you know we want to move on with the page and believe me I could spend <laughs> a whole day doing uh, a portrait the face and the skin tone but I'm going to try and use some restraint and not do that.
And I want to make sure I kind of keep it clean and wipe it off a few times because when you are starting to blend, things do start to kind of kind of flake off, and we don't want to blend it into our um, page because I want to try to make it a little bit smoother. Okay, kind of brush it away a little. Um, I guess I should do some of the ears too. Do a little bit of blending those out. Just kind of eyeball it, see where you want more um, to put more pressure to blend it out a little bit more. And you can go back in with the nectar if you feel like. You want a little bit more color and just kind of, well, darn, broke that. Hate it when that happens. When you, um, if you feel like you just need a little bit more. And kind of the last step I would think would be going in with the sienna brown and kind of adding a little bit more pressure with this to kind of really, um, carve out that shadow. I did use some um, pressure with the peach. But I didn't completely burnish it to kind of, so that way I can still kind of go in and do a little bit of work. Not a lot, but to kind of that way I can still kind of judge what needs some more um, shadows.
because you can always go back and darken it up if you still have some room to work with but you don't ever want to at least I don't want to go in too dark and then have to line it up because that would take a while Got our nectar. Working my way into the crease of the eyelid. Just trying to kind of camouflage those. That really dark um, line. This is Sienna Brown. And I am using a little more pressure. go a little bit right here with the sienna brown okay then we have our nectar I'm just gonna run that along the hairline and in the darker areas bit more pressure. Just trying to smooth it out. And hope we've kind of camouflaged those um, more obvious um, dark areas.
And it's okay if you get a little bit into the hair because we are going to be touching that up whenever we do her hair. This is Sienna Brown, just touching up a few of the areas. go back in with the pink I'm just gonna try and brighten up the center of the cheeks a little bit more I'm just using the side of the pencil lead I just want a hint of pink Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to start smoothing out the middle areas again. And I'm going to be using my peach and my light peach to do this. Let's make sure we got it clear of any kind of uh, lead. And I'm going to start using just a little bit more pressure. And I'll show you with this area up here instead of hopping around the whole face because um, hopefully this will be the last step with um, our skin tone here and I'm just working this around the face using kind of medium to um, light pressure and just going back and forth and just do this until you're happy with um, kind of the smoothness and the uh, saturation of color you're getting to kind of wipe it off a little bit do your if you have like a paintbrush or a makeup brush or anything that you use to kind of dust away those um, shavings that come off and when you start to get to where you like it and you want it to be a little bit smoother you're going to start to use a good amount of pressure and just work on our way toward the center of the forehead here. We don't want to lose our highlight, so then we're going to go in with our light peach and kind of pick in you know a little bit further in we're going to go around the highlight using kind of medium to light pressure I was working my way around the highlight sometimes I feel like I might leave too much of a highlight but I don't know but yeah picking that kind of a little bit further down from the hairline and going around I feel like my light peach is really messy today Now I'm starting to use a little bit more pressure, medium to hard pressure really. I'm not like 
bearing down on it super hard, but I am kind of keeping my hand closer to the lead to kind of put just a tad bit more. Let's smooth up here. Okay, we can go back in with our peach and kind of keeping toward the end of the lead, the barrel, closer to the lead. And that's really all the pressure you need. If you kind of choke up on the pencil, you have light, your lighter pressure. You kind of go in the middle, you got a little bit more. And then if you kind of get a little closer, you're kind of keeping that pencil still and um, just using that amount to kind of blend out the page a little bit better and to kind of smooth out those areas that you feel like you know you need to smooth out that way we can kind of darken up a little bit of that area that we kind of lost a little bit when we went through with the light peach Okay, so I'm really happy with that. And then we're gonna go in with our highlight. You can use a colorless blender, you can use white. Um, sometimes I like to use cream. And so that's what I'm gonna use today. And um, I'm gonna, I think I already did, but we're gonna make sure we have it clear. We don't wanna have anything balled up underneath that layer. And um, I'm gonna take it in. We're gonna go a little bit lighter. And I'm just gonna go over that center of the forehead. Adding a small layer of the cream color. And I'm just going around that highlight. Very softly. And you can go back in with your light peach. Then we're going back in with the cream. a little bit closer to that pencil lead and that's all the pressure I feel like I need to blend this out and smooth it okay so we're done with the forehead and you can do it in sections if you like and that way you know you're not like me sometimes where I'm kind of bouncing around the whole face but we did smooth out the forehead a little bit and I'm pretty happy with that end result. I got you a little bit closer so maybe we can see what we're doing with this little tiny um, drop of rain. I am taking um, electric blue and very lightly adding, outlining this drop. Okay, so we have that down, and so then we'll take this uh, aqua, light aqua, and I'll just kind of work along the edges here. And then this is um, cloud blue. Kind of going, adding that to it. Then I'll go back in with electric blue. And I do want to kind of blend it out with the white Prisma. I think that looks okay. Uh, 
Um, I guess we'll do this one too. This is electric blue. I'm just kind of going along the raindrop here. And we're going to take our light aqua. Maybe I won't use any of the cloud blue. I don't know if I liked that too much. And this is white. I'll just go in and blend the two colors together. And I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do with the raindrops for now. Maybe I can come up with something better, but <laughs> for now, that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to work my way around her face um, with the peach and the light peach and cream. take cream and just very lightly run that over that part okay I think her face is done finally it only took me several hours I'm sorry I'm so slow at doing um, the skin tone and then I probably will do a majority of her body off camera and then we'll work on the other parts of the page just so we can you know move along I think I will really quick um, Maybe try to do something with her lips. I'm gonna take Carmine Red and just work my way kinda in the center and then on the outside.
Oops. Totally got some of that on her face. I mean on her teeth. following along the, the drawn outline of her lips with carmine red. And doing the same to uh, the top. I don't want it to be too um, overpowering, like a bright lip color. This is a verme vermilion, pale vermilion. Just kind of going in the center of her lips with this color. Going back in with Carmine Red. Almost going for like a coral color, coral, coral red color. vermilion kind of staying toward the center carmine red
we'll take light peach and just kind of maybe blend those out, hopefully, with the light peach color. back in with our carmine red okay I think that is pretty good I really like the light color of that and um, I think this is probably all I'll do for part one um, I know I spent a million years on um, her face, but I do tend to do that. I don't mean to, it's just my process, and maybe one day I'll get a little faster at it, but until then I really do enjoy um, the time I take when I do the portraits and the skin tones. Um, but yeah, I'll be thinking on what color to do her hair. It will probably be brown, probably, I don't know. But uh, thanks for watching part one and until the next video. Bye y'all.